coming to you, being transformed by you. It's such a pleasure to hear about it and such a pleasure to see it. We ask that you'll do it to us. Do it here in our country. Do it on this continent. Spread this, Lord, I pray. Thank you for the hope that is in you. Whenever you do these things, we, our hope is kindled and rekindled. Burn again the fire, Lord, that is in us. Even though it's dim and running low on fuel, I ask, Spirit of the Lord, bring us new life, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Cheers. Hmm. So, Christ-centered work, doing the one thing. Let's look at this text. In Luke chapter 10, a wonderful story. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at Jesus' feet and heard him or heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her, to help me. You don't have a problem like this in your house, right? I tell you, there's trouble in the house sometimes because of this business about work. We're talking about Christ-centered work, right? But work, sometimes in the house, I'm telling you, hey, uh, you know, I can tell you a lot of stories, but anyway, there's always trouble about that. Why are you not doing anything? Why is she not doing that? Why are you not getting her to do this thing? Why is she not there when we are really, you know, really needing help? Where is she? She's sleeping. Again, how many times is she sleeping? You know, on and on and on, those kind of things, right? It doesn't happen in my house. I don't have a girl. Only one I got. And uh, there's enough trouble there. She told me a long time ago, just before I got married, I want you to know that I don't like housework. I said, wonderful, great. And me too, me too, I don't like housework. We got a very clean house. <laughs> yeah, I mean, imagine, here's a woman that invited Jesus, right? Open her home, heart home to the Lord, Martha. And I think, you know, I was just thinking about that this morning. I'm thinking, what is Martha cooking? And who did she have over she just invited them. Guess who she had over? Not only Jesus, but she had 12 other hungry men. That's a lot, right? How much of biryani do you think we need for that? And then whoever else was struggling along in the entourage with Jesus also came along. Wherever Jesus was, there was people. And then, of course, now you have to cook with everybody. Martha was wrestling in the kitchen. And I was wondering, what is she doing? I would think that she will have the big things, right? She's going to go cut a lamb. That's what I was thinking. What you going to go? You can't get mangoes and you know, feed the 12 people. Where is she going to get food? That she'll have to slaughter not only a lamb, but maybe some chickens, right? I can imagine plucking all those feathers and that poor goat or sheep is being sorted out. I think she had some help. But then she found out when she looked for Mary, she was no way to be found. Then she spied through all of that. There she's sitting there listening to Jesus. Jesus' word. And I'm sure some of you ladies would not like that of your daughter. What you, hey, 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 hey. What you doing there? Come this side. So what this Martha did, she was so fed up. I would think in my vernacular, she was so dick that she decided 
I'm going to talk to Jesus. Imagine this. You were straight up to the teacher, busy teaching. He goes, excuse me, can I, please, what do you tell my sister, please? She's sitting here doing absolutely nothing. Hmm? Tell her to come help me. Don't you care? Don't you think that you know, I need help? And then, then his reply, Jesus answered her and said, verse 41, Martha, Martha, out loud now, everybody knows what's happened. You are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. Good man. Now, if there were Jesus telling the story, you would think, all right. But if those things happen in a house where, you know, there's some action, like chickens are to be sorted out, you know, to cut one dressed chicken, already cut, it's halfway dressed, now you've got to undress them more and chop it into pieces and so on. Um, yeah, well, that. It's, it's uh, not easy. Some of the ladies getting married now, I know I had to teach some people. Uh, this is how you c cut a chicken, open it up, you know, take these things, throw it away, cut like this. Oh, you, this is how you get to the bone. Oh, yeah, yeah, like that. But, but we don't ever learn, you see. Only when you get married, and I think, I'd rather go to Rambas or somebody and, and buy chicken curry. It's easy like that. Or get somebody to cook it, isn't it? Why learn it? But this girl, Martha, was really, you know, hectic. So she, and she thought she would get a gain a victory. So in our story, you got Martha's view. Martha's view was there are hungry men here, mostly. We have to feed them. That's right. That's good. And um, wherever she got that lamb or goat from and uh, chickens, uh, you bought from a local grocer on the road. I don't know what she did. But there's unleavened bread. You've got to put bread in the oven and make bread and so on and get ready. It's not like you go to the local tuck shop and get things, you know. It was hectic, this thing. So this girl was, you know, sweating. Because all the, she invited these people thinking their sister will help. Don't you care that my sister has left me to serve alone? You're going to eat this now, right? You want to eat. Send this girl. Ah, you worry about too many things, Martha. Troubled about too many things. Only one thing is needed. Not the chicken, not the goat, not that. Not the curry, not the rice, not the dinner, not the lunch. One thing is needed. And this Mary has chosen the good part, which will not be taken away from her. I don't know if he did all that, but I, I think he, she went away from there with a tail between her legs. So the mother had a view of the work, got to feed some people, but then Mary had a view, and her view was, you know what, what's more important than making dinner? Yeah. I want to sit at the Lord's feet. Wow, that thing is better than food. You know, I've got to sit there. Dinner, I, uh, lunch, I can always eat. But this, I can't always have. I've got to have this. And then Jesus had his view. His view was, I invented work. I brought work to pass. I made it happen. I created the whole world in six days, and the seventh day I rested. I have a view of work, and I think it's important for you to work. I think, by the way, uh, girls, it's important for you to cook, hmm? learn how to cook, learn how to figure, because if, if other you'll starve. Or if you've got money, great. You, everybody, you know, I don't like to eat out and bring food from everywhere. It's just, yeah, it's too much. Everybody's different. Masala, oof, and, and uh, mutton. You know, that thing is getting me crazy. Not everybody buys some nicer meat. You know, they buy whatever they buy. They don't even know what they're buying sometimes. They buy that thing. And the moment you start cooking, they've got, a, they've got one smell coming out of it that you don't like. I've got to label this issue because I think we also forget that part. That part is important. But the better part, the good part, is this part that Jesus is talking about. But most people 
focus on the minors, which is the food, and they forget the major one that is sitting at the feet of Jesus, which is the real work. Our real work is sitting at the feet of Jesus. Do you know why most people don't want to pray? Because prayer is work. Yeah, it's work. When you go before the Lord, and now you have to say something, you have to think about what you must say. There he is, and you want something, but you say, okay, now I'll just leave it to somebody else to cook the food, like that. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, you know, if I tell him something, it's all right. Other people praying for you doesn't make it good for you, by the way. Because God wants to hear you. And if Martha left the food and came and sat at the feet of Jesus, well, wonderful. I've had sometimes, uh, you know, home groups or small groups happen. And, um, and then the lady of the house is missing because she's busy frying samosas and, and all of that there. Hmm? Because now that's a big thing. That's the main thing. Everybody must have, what are they, they going to have? No, you go fry samosas and all that early. If you, don't, if you can't come early, then buy the silly thing. But I say to you, better way, don't put samosas. Because these people that are coming from their houses around the corner, they must eat. <laughs> they must eat their own food and they must come. What is going on with you in your house is that you open the door to Jesus. Remember, there's a good part. And if you miss the good part, I've had people, you know, you go to visit, sometimes family members, right? You go to visit, they invite you to come and eat. They're never there. They're busy cooking. And then when they finish cooking, they're washing. Right? Then you get up to go after eating because you, when you eat, you have to go, right? <laughs> then they're worried. They're saying, ah, you didn't, we didn't have a chance to talk. Duh. What's more important? The person you invited to listen, to hang out, to talk, or you cooking and washing? banging the dishes in the back, everyone must know you doing something. Please, people, do this other thing, which is the good part. The good part is not the head curry. The good part is this part, the one thing. Jesus says, only one thing. And we talk about a Christ-centered work and what Jesus did when he died on the cross. Remember the words, it is finished. Well, he did some work on the cross. It is finished. And the work of salvation was done. And then he sat down. Hebrews chapter 1 verse number 3 says, And when he had by himself purged our sins, the last part of it, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. He sat down. He sat down meaning he had a rest. We, we enter his rest. We enter that work that he's finished. And in order for us to live out this life, we must go and be with him to figure out what the plan is for us. If you don't go to him and talk about his plan for you, for that day, for that week, that month, that year, or your life, then what instruction are you going to get and follow? What are you going to do? Because if you're doing your work, which we do very well, we go to work, you get your money, and then you buy food, and you cook, and you eat, and you live, and you enjoy that life. The good part is miss. You miss, you miss, you miss the, mess, the big thing. You've got to get the big thing right. The main thing. The one thing that is needed. And God is calling us. We're talking about revival just now, right? God is calling us to that. If you don't go, those kids, if they didn't go into that chapel to go pray, to seek the Lord, nothing would have happened. But one day, they, when they went there, something happened. God met them. Do you want that? Because you don't know when that thing is going to happen. You go into your room. God is going to meet you. The one thing, only one thing is needed. You're worried about many things, he said. 
but Mary has chosen what is better, that good part, and it will not be taken away. We must not neglect the one thing. It brings chaos into our life. Listen to this text in Song of Solomon or Song of Songs, chapter 2, verse 15. It says, catch us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines or the, the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. Our vineyards, that is, who ruin the vineyards. And then this other one in chapter 1, verse 6, the writer says, Do not stare upon me because I am dark, because I am darkened by the sun. My mother's sons were angry with me and made me take care of the vineyards. So he's playing in the sun. He's outside working. But he says, my own vineyard, I have neglected. There's a huge lesson there. Where we do everything else. We worry about everybody else. We worry about everything that everybody is cooking in their pot. And then you take it and you say, well, this people are cooking that thing in their pot. But you neglect your own vineyard. Your own soul. The care of your own heart. Your own Eden. Your garden. We have to take care of our hearts. And God comes to us looking for roses, for fruit. He comes like the fig tree looking for figs. He comes for fruit. Is he going to find it? No. You might find a very worried person troubled about many things. But Martha, you need, you need the one thing. Mary chose that part. See, our main vocation, our main work in life is to care for our souls. Yeah. And the world says, you know, you've got to think about yourself now. But what they mean is go take a break, have coke, uh, put an umbrella out on the beach. You've got an Im image. You can go later. That's possibly. <laughs> they think that is rest. But I'm telling you, after about 50 years of being in the Lord, the real rest is when you're in his presence, loving him. It's the good part. Better than any food on earth. I don't know how long you're going to take to figure that one out, but that's the important part. Our main vocation in our lives is to go and be with the Lord. And don't even uh, announce or, uh, you know, uh, make an announcement about, hey, I'm spending a couple of hours with the Lord every day. No, you don't have to worry about that. You're with the Lord, right? You don't have to say that to everybody. You just do it privately. And whatever it is going on privately, God, you will see, God opens up publicly, blesses you publicly. Is there anything more important than that? We worry about food so much, and that food is making us sick. Have you noticed? Now you go to some fish shop, and they'll write the big, big words. This fish was not caught here locally. That's to comfort you. Eh? The city, you know, and, well, where are you getting this from then? They might say, it's not caught on the South African waters. You can't go to the sea to get some good fish, really. What's going on in our world? And I think that Sapada, hmm? in Tamil they say Sapada, is like a god. The God of our bellies. And that is making us sick. Got stuff in there. And the main thing that God is calling us to, we miss it. Big miss. So, you know, seeking the kingdom is what God's calling us. Now, we cannot be healthy individuals and healthy families or communities or nations without a restoration of our soul. That lady who left her water jar that day at the wells where Jesus met her, Samaritan woman, she went into Samaria, into the city, and she began to proclaim Christ there. There was a revival broke out in that place. 
And then the people listening to Jesus said, you know, we heard from this woman, but now that we heard you, we know, uh, you know, you are the Messiah. Please stay. And he, they, he stayed with them four days and it was like a revival going on. All because of one person who had life. Do you understand what you can cause in the world? One person. One. You can spread a fire in the whole world. You can't be healthy individual, families, communities, churches, nations without a restoration of our souls. Nothing is more important. It's like a tree. I tell you, we are always growing. Always growing. How healthy you're growing is another matter. That's with, within that small seedling, that little seed, is all the DNA of a major tree. To make it into a tree, it's one seed. So what it does is when it's planted, it roots itself in the, in the rich fertilized soil of the forest, the forest floor, and that seedling is prepared to grow. But all the ingredients for growth are not in itself. We have the word of the Lord, but we found it even in the parable of the sow and the seed. The problem was not the seed, not the sower, but the problem was the soil. But if you get the soil right, that's wonderful because now you've got a good seed, the word of the Lord. And the ingredients are found everywhere else. The water from the, from the soil and the skies will, will feed that, that tree that seeds hunger. And the, and the water then, of course, is captured by its leaves as the leaves the, drop their waters and, and it feeds the roots. And the roots, of course, the feeder roots stretch itself for supply all over that forest. And in the soil, they've got rich minerals. If you, if you look at a bottle, a bottle of water, if you only buy it in the back, you'll see all kinds of minerals listed there, what that water contains. And that, came, that water came from the earth. And all the wonderful ingredients that are in the earth brings life to us and so to the seed in the ground the minerals in the earth the rich earth offered by the life and by the death of the community of trees all around the trees that were either living or dying do you know that all that that compost that comes out of trees that have decayed and broken don't throw it away into another place because that is life being produced produces life and vegetables and so on. I don't throw it away. I deliberately sometimes when I eat fruit, throw it in the garden. Because I tell you, that thing takes its own course in the earth. It feeds your, your, your vegetables. It feeds your, your, your trees. So the minerals that are in the earth comes from the from the life and the death of the trees, the community of trees all around it, it will nurse it. So, Psalm 1 tells us we are like a tree. In other words, the water we drink and the minerals we gather all play a part in shaping our character into the likeness of Christ. For those of us who have decided to follow Christ, and the only way, it's the only way to become a true human, how you stretch yourself out in prayer, in study, in self-care, in community life. That's also how the dead trees, live trees, you're in the, in the forest of, um, among a community of trees. Those people all around you give you, how you stretch out to others produces life in you. What about mission? So we need to stretch out our roots in prayer and study, self-care and community life and mission and all of these things have something to do with growth personal spiritual growth is very intentional that's our part it doesn't god you know people say hey i'm not growing you know why hey i don't know man i'm you know i don't know i've got to go somewhere i can grow really go for it the growth happens inside you as you prepare yourself for God. 
Hmm? Nothing wrong with the seed. Something's wrong with the soil. And the pro soil produces very different fruit, different results. Recently, I heard Alexander speak from this particular poem, and I want to put it up for you so you can see it. It's a poem um, by Antonio Machado. It was first cited in a book by Robert Blay, Iron Man, Iron John, sorry. Iron Man. It's called The Wind, One Brilliant Day. The wind, one brilliant day, called to my soul with an odor of jasmine. And the wind said, in return for the odor of my jasmine, I'd like all the odor of your roses. But I said, I have no roses. All the flowers in my garden are dead. Then the wind said, well then, I'll take the withered petals and the yellow leaves. And the wind left. And I wept. And I said to myself, what have you done with the garden that was entrusted to you? A very powerful poem, this. And the garden that God entrusted to you was your soul, your Eden, your heart. And this garden, which is your soul, your Eden, your meeting place with God, how is it? How is your heart? What is the state of your spirit? How is it going with you and for you? The garden of your soul is your Eden. What have you done with a garden that was entrusted to you? God gave you the garden. God gave you your soul. If you just feed it just with your food, your life, you only eat curry and rice and whatever else, physically, food, before long, you too will say, like the wind, when the wind, the spirit comes, and you come over your garden, and you will say, I don't have anything in my garden. The wind is coming with its own smell, the jasmine. It's coming for the smell that's coming from you, your roses. What have you got to give me, the spirit asks. And you say, I don't have, I only got dead leaves. That's all I got going, dead leaves. He says, well, I'll take that. And the wind took all that away. And there was nothing that you and I could have given to the Lord. The spirit is coming for your fragrance. And the only way you can be given and, uh, and fragrance imparted to you is imparted to you by the spirit as you go and be with him. What is coming out of you? What is, what is coming out of you? What is the smell that is coming from you? How is your language? What is it that you say? Is it coming out of the presence of the Lord? Something that you got from him? Or is it something that you just hearing from here and there? All petals, fallen petals, dry leaves. And the spirit of the Lord is coming. Neglected vineyard. I kept everybody else's vineyard. I took care of the other vineyards. My own vineyard I have neglected. God is coming and he came like the, to the fig tree and found there was no figs but leaves. I don't know about you. We need to sort this out. Let me ask a couple of questions and we'll land. I think it will do well if we were to answer them properly. Am I finding my identity in my relationship with Jesus? or increasingly in my tasks, in what I do. Where, where is your identity, identity coming from? Is it about him? See, when it's about him, then you can say, revival is happening to me. Where your identity is coming from your job, 
What is a job? It's so fickle. Yeah, it gives us money, puts food on the table. But the good part, we miss. We're not given the perfume, the fragrance. So where are you finding your identity? Am I taking time, am I taking the time to unclutter my physical life? Am I taking the time to unclutter my spiritual life? All of this is work, by the way. I can't involve myself in unwholesome talk. I love to joke and kid around and all of that. That's very different. I don't want to talk about anybody. I don't want to take what the smell of this curry is, what's cooking here, and go give it there. Or ask questions as if you're very concerned individually, you want to pray. Only God knows how concerned you are about what is going on with one another. As you stretch your roots out in community life, life comes from that which is dead and that which is alive. Yeah. So, take time to unclutter. Don't get involved. Maybe have fewer friends. Friends will add value. Hmm? And maybe you should be like that Samaritan woman, having got something, go give it to those that need it. Do it now while you have a testimony with people. See, if I go back after all these years to my friends on the street, most of them are dead now, or very old, or they're in jail, or they're still somewhere. Hmm? I missed the generation, right? So I got to go now. I got to do this now. As God, you, you can't go if you don't have it. Most people don't go because they don't have it. And the church is trying to make people to go and people that don't have it to go. And they don't want to go. They feel guilty to go. And I'm saying, Let's go get God first. Go get him. And the spirit of the Lord would, would, would take from you the perfume that is coming from you. You want action? There it is. Third question. Am I, am I at peace in my intimacy with Christ? Am I at peace in my inter intimacy with Christ? Secure in my identity and Fastened by love to his designs, his purposes. Am I seeking his kingdom? Am I, am I okay with that life? Or, or I must have this other life and I must be worried about what's cooking. I must cook for people. I must sort things out. I must, you know, I got to get that sorted. I'm saying to you, unclutter. Find the mind of the Lord. If you want to look younger, hmm? I say to you, go find the Lord. Go get God. Be there with him. I love you, man. So what is leading me? Do I sense turmoil, inner turmoil? Am I always upset? Is there, you know when people are upset, they're angry. You ask, whatever, whatever. What's the problem? They say, no, that, but no, no, don't, don't go there. What is there inside you that's rising? It's easy to blame somebody else for your demise. But you are reacting a certain way. Something's in you that needs to be sorted out. People must even club you and club you and all that. You should be able to be at peace still. When I came to the Lord, my, my father, just before that, my father and I, it's a role. You know what I mean by role? Not a riff, riffless. We fought a lot about lots of things. But when I came to the Lord, I was young, I was 19. And because of the Lord, he would want to persecute me, but he's not thinking it's persecution. Oh, I thought it's persecution. And there were times where you use his slipper to 
hit me. And I remember one time he hit me across my face and I looked at him and I said, God bless you, the Lord bless you. Jesus loves you. Bah! On the other side. I said, God bless you. That would not have happened before. I'm at peace. I don't have turmoil. If somebody were to trap my toes, they were going to feel it. No, I need to be centered. I, I need to be substantial. I need, I need to be filled. It's like, you know, when you do your service on your vehicles, the guy would have to do a few things. You have to check, you know, how much oil there is. And if there's dirty oil, take the oil out, drain it, flush it if he has to, put new oil. And if you're driving, your thermostat and things in your vehicle will tell you, oh, it's 90, but you want to, hey, red. It tells you how things are going in your engine. Anytime now, you're going to walk. But when we don't do any of those checkups, don't go before the Lord. You will never know. We're always hunting for a partner in our lives, looking for something else. I'm telling you, find Jesus. It's the way. He's the way. The truth and the life. And if there's somebody like a partner that needs to, the Lord will parade them in front of you. Will bring them and then also get them to give you some attention. You know, then, then you have to pick and choose. And once you pick one, that's it. You're not going to get the parade again. Huh? But don't go looking for it. And some people go to the clubs to look for somebody. How's that going? Who else is going there looking, you think? Go get God. Find him. You see that woman had five husbands? God's not nervous about What's happened to you? And what's going on with you now? He's not nervous about it. But she was there all alone. And the Lord saw her and the Lord went to her. Maybe she prayed. I'm not sure. At some point in her life, the Lord heard her. And he went there at a certain hour and talked to her. <laughs>